Welcome back to Full Spectrum Living with CBD. My name is Meredith and I am your co-host here with Jessica and Adrian. And today we're going to take the mystery out of the endocannabinoid system. I am super excited for this topic because I couldn't even spell endocannabinoid <laughs> when we started the conversation. And now I know I'm just going to learn so much. So today we're going to talk about really what is the endocannabinoid system to start with. So who wants to tell more about that? Oh my gosh. So this is a big topic. This is a big topic. We are definitely not uh, research scientists or doctors. So we just want to put that out there, but we are passionate about this topic. So we do a lot of research. We have some really credible sources. So just throwing that out there that we'll link to you later. But just to start off to your point, Meredith, the endocannabinoid system, like what is it? Well, it's, it's a physiological system that's like the other ones that we have in our body, right? So, you know, just like your endocrine system and your nervous system, it is found within the body. It has a series of receptors and endocannabinoids um, within the body. And its sole purpose is to bring balance to the body, whether it's from external stimuli or internal stimuli. It wants homeostasis. Mm. Perfect. Okay. So can you give me an example of like another system in the body that functions similar to this that people may have heard of? So they have like a point of reference or a way to relate that. Yeah. So Jessica, I don't know if you had one off the top of your head. Yeah. I was going to say like fight or flight response, just um, reacting to something that's happening in your environment and, uh, and just the cascade of events that happens internally to help you prepare for that. Um, I think that would be a good comparison, but the endocannabinoid system is, um, it's, it's really significant and it's really different and it's newly discovered. So it's very exciting. <laughs> well, and that's what you were saying. Yeah. I mean, this is, you're kind of on the forefront of something new, right? I mean, we, this is a, a new system of the body that was just discovered pretty recently, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, basically, kind of just like a brief history of how we found this. Um, so starting back in like the 40s, we were able to kind of locate and find and then isolate some cannabinoids. And up through the 60s and 80s, that was um, really the, the peak of research that was happening. So a cannabinoid, a phytocannabinoid, is um, an element, a chemical structure or compound found in a cannabis plant, if it's phytocannabinoid. Um, and they found at, at t to date, I think there's like 118 mm -hmm. uh, phytocannabinoids, something like that. Um, which most of we don't know a ton about, uh, but the most abundant ones, CBD and THC, we know quite a bit about and are studying more. So, um, you know, just up to like the 60s or 80s, that was the, the focus of research. And then um, we started to discover that it was acting in the body in certain ways and it piqued curiosities. And then uh, in the mid 90s, uh, it was, well, early 90s, so 1992, um, we found that we have endogenous cannabinoids. So things that our body are producing that um, the, the structures of cannabis plants mimic internally. So um, when we found that we have endogenous cannabinoids, we had to explain like why and how they work and what they stimulate and uh, what they do. And so we kind of just from there worked backwards to discover a series of receptors and uh, enzymes that are all connected in how they communicate and function. And um, it was named the endocannabinoid system or endocannabinoid system, depending on what region you're from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so basically from there, um, it just kind of spiraled into <laughs> what it is today, which is massive amounts of research, uh, peer-reviewed studies being done in multiple um, nations and uh, just really accumulating a lot of very impressive research um, that it has a lot of um, implications in human health. Um, so if I understand what you're saying is that there are actually elements in my body right now that my body has produced naturally, right? right? That, ha that my body has made just like my body makes bone marrow or my body makes blood cells or, you know, my body makes all sorts of things in order for my body to function, mm -hmm. right? And so right. you're saying that there's an element that my body creates on its own naturally that is identical or nearly identical to elements that are found in cannabis yeah uh so the the 
endogenous cannabinoids, the elements that your body produce, the, um, the most well-known are 2-AG and anandamide. And uh, so I, I like to point out with this anandamide, um, ananda is uh, Sanskrit for the for bliss, for bliss. So mm -hmm. it's referred to as the bliss molecule by some but um basically yeah you produce those and you produce them um at, at need and we'll go into that more i think in our next episode but um just responding to stimulus in your body mm -hmm. and uh fun fact you produce them in breast milk and it's thought mm -hmm. that that is associated with um forming bond and uh between mother and child and and stimulating appetite and satiation Huh. That's so, but so it's just so incredible to me that what you're saying is that I have this system that creates this element that can be identically matched to the, you know, cannabinoid. And so that must mean then that my body can have different levels of this and different levels of function of my endocannabinoid system. It can be functioning well, it can be functioning poorly. And then when I supplement with an external cannabinoid, it can bring that system into balance. Is that, yeah. that like, that's a fair statement. Right. That, is, that is a fair statement. Absolutely. And we can definitely dig into that further, but it really does come down to, so if you think about it, you asked about a system that was kind of similar to that. Well, similar to our endocannabinoid receptors that we have in our body, we also have opioid receptors, right? Mm -hmm. So opium from poppy, also from plant, but also meant to accept and to bring those things in our body that help bring, um, and that are very largely therapeutic or, or our body needs in order to uh, maintain right? So same thing with nicotine. We have nicotine receptors within our body. So our bodies are made to consume these plant materials and to, you know, bring, um, bring us in balance when it comes to specifically for the endocannabinoid system, or actually maybe being bring pain relief or other things that kind of come with those other plant materials. Huh, mm -hmm. Okay. So when it comes to like the significance of the endocannabinoid system, right? So we've talked about like, what is it? When did we discover it? How did, how did that happen? Kind of the history. Um, why is this system so significant in my body, com maybe compared to other systems or, you know, why should I care if, if my endocannabinoid system is in balance or not? <laughs> well, so there's, um, there's been a lot of studies into it. And again, while um, it is fairly new. It is yesterday in, in the science and, and medical world, right? So uh, the early 1990s, it wasn't that long ago. Although cannabis has been used in therapies for, you know, 5,000 plus years. Um, again, the fact that we just found this system is it's so new. So there's a lot of more studies that still need to be done. But there's been a lot of really good studies that focus on the health of the endocannabinoid system and how it relates to a lot of the conditions that are plaguing us today. Um, things like fibromyalgia, migraines, irritable bowel syndrome um, are largely rooted in the health of the endocannabinoid system. Hmm. And so if someone's, how, how can someone's endocannabinoid system have gotten out of whack in the first place? Yeah, uh, I think like, like many other things, it's kind of um, a combination of um, an assault from your external environment. So um, what we're experiencing through our diets and uh, through pollution or whatever, um, but also just natural predispositions to, you know, genetically, maybe someone um, is more likely to have fewer receptors or enzymes that break down the endogenous cannabinoids. And uh, so a lot of different variables and I don't think we quite know exactly why because I think it's it's different um, often right, right. from person to person but right mm -hmm. and so you guys were you, we were talking and you were sharing with me um, that you've even had someone challenge you as to whether or not this endocannabinoid system was real or yeah. if you if you had made it up <laughs> so, yeah so it's it's a funny story and and I don't uh, blame the woman at all so it was a probably I think in 2017 we were in store and trying to explain to a consumer who had walked in and she was curious as to why it worked and how quickly she was going to see results and I mentioned the endocannabinoid system and she literally like quote unquote said you're making that up you have just, you've made this up, which I thought was flattering because that's amazing, right? So I'd be like, I, I wish I had, you know, I wish this, this was my discovery or, or I wish I was so creative to come up with something like this. But because of the fact that it's so new um, and people hadn't heard about it, people were still learning about CBD. People today are still 
learning about CBD and hearing about cannabidiol for the first time. So it, it makes sense that when hearing about the endocannabinoid system, where to be perfectly honest, there's some doctors out there that a couple years ago hadn't heard about the endocannabinoid system. It's not part of what they teach in medical school. Um, I think that that's probably changing, you know, and that's, I've never gone to medical school, so I can't, I'm not speaking from personal experience, but I'm taking that from conversations that we've had with physicians that said, have said, we don't study the endocannabinoid system in college. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's changed from just being almost kind of shunned or mocked, like it was, um, you know, pseudoscience or something, um, to it's progressed and people are acknowledging that it is real. I've heard a few physicians who said recently, you know, they'll have a day devoted to this system in like a nursing or medical school. Um, but I think that that's, that's really accelerating too. I, I've seen a lot of movement um, in, from what we've heard, uh, in pharmacy schools and um, schools for um you know physicians where that's going to be not 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 mentioned and not just a day but an entire course hopefully right. soon as as it should be i mean it's um it, there's a lot of really powerful quotes from physicians and uh one that i like to share which i'll probably butcher the quote quote because i don't have it written down right now but uh dr david allen just recently uh retired as a heart surgeon to become a full-time researcher uh with the international cannabis cannabinoid research society i think is what it's called um and he's quoted as saying that the discovery of the endocannabinoid system is uh, single-handedly one of the most important medical discoveries of our lifetime. And in his opinion, will save more lives than the discovery of the sterile surgical technique. And I'm a heart physician saying this, he says in his quote. You know, so wow. I mean, he's not the only one saying something so strong, right. um, but it, it's like it's like we just discover, discovered the central nervous system or something, right. you know? Right. I mean, it, it's that important. Um, and yet, uh, we're just scratching the surface on what's happening, like what the elements that we do know that are involved. Uh, there's a lot of things that are still unexplained as to what's happening. So we know that there's more receptors and, and um, endogenous cannabinoids than we're familiar with at the moment. So a lot to learn. So do you feel like this is a time period that we will look back on as kind of like the pioneering days of really understanding the endocannabinoid system, really the role it plays in our body, even, even how we use CBD um, to bring that system back in, into play? Do you feel like these are the days that we'll look back on and, and say like, wow, you know, those were, those were the people that were involved in this industry, the people that were doing the, the research are the real pioneers around helping people to find, find relief and find healing. I, Honestly, I think that was maybe 20 years ago as far as the research is, but for, um, you know, the, the common layperson or whatever like us, like it's, it's just now taking hold in, in how important that is for general health. And so like as a whole for a population, I think, yeah, right now is when we're discovering that and it's, it's um, being recognized. But I think research wise, the pioneer days were 20 and 30 years ago, if not more. Mm -hmm. Oh, I would say pioneer days from the forward thinkers for sure. I think when it comes to um, what Jessica talks about from the from the overall public, yes, and I think that also includes the medical community. Mm -hmm. And I think anytime that you put the medical community and their seal of approval on it, it automatically like restarts the clock, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So to your point, I do think that this would be the time that people will look back to is like, it started today. Like this is this is the day that it started. Similar to. I mean, kind of like with the federal farm bill of 2018, oh, hemp's legal in 2018. Well, hemp was legal in 2014. How could we forget the last four years? So I think different like that, it, like it restarts the clock. So I think, um, I think people will start looking back to, and we'll mention some other studies that did happen 35 years ago that were, you know, you sit there and I think, and I'm like want to stab a, a knife through my heart thinking about how we how much further we could have been um yeah. in this whole process and we can talk about that later sure sure yeah. all right well any other thoughts that you want to add or share about the endocannabinoid system <laughs> it's, it's millions complex. <laughs> it's <laughs> complex so we're going to have some additional we're going to have some additional episodes that are going to yeah. dive into more of the complexity of it but when it comes to the history the significance um, and really the reason that you wanted to share this piece um, it was so that people would know that they have this system and, and know that ultimately it's 
because of the system that CBD has an impact on us, right? Exactly right. right. Exactly right. Because I don't think that you can truly understand or uh, have the belief um, in a quality CBD product if you don't actually understand at least a little bit as to the, the why it's working. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're going out there and you're going to have a conversation with your doctor and you're nervous about having this conversation with your doctor about wanting to try a quality CBD product, going in there with but then doctor, tell me about the endocannabinoid system. Because while a lot of doctors are, yes, they're, they are opening up to it and they're supportive of it, there's still some physicians that aren't. Mm -hmm. So being able to respectfully challenge your physician and say, but what if, what, you know, if we have this, then why are you, why is this something that you're not for? Mm -hmm. um, I think is a healthy conversation and something that every, um, everybody should be willing to have a conversation with their doctor about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Did you have another thought there, Jessica? Oh, no, it's probably off subject. I would just wanted to point out that uh, this system was named after cannabis, not because like it requires cannabis to work, but because we found it through research in cannabis. Yeah. And I wanted to kind of specify that because there seems to be like confusion around that. But, um, you know, you don't have to take cannabis to have this system. It exists whether you have no experience with it or not. Um, but as it turns out, the cannabinoids produced in the plant are a great match to help improve the health of this system uh, when used correctly. And it's exciting that we're in a time where we're learning how to do that. And it's have awesome. access to it. Yep. For yep. sure. For sure. Well, for this episode of Full Spectrum Living with CBD, I want to make sure that we've shared with people if they want to know more about this or about the broader topics of CBD, where can they go to find that information? So we'll definitely have a blog post on this uh, specific podcast. Um, we'll definitely link you to some of our sources that we use for research. So you can actually um, have access to the information that we've used to get this, to, get this to you. Um, in addition to some of the studies that talk about some of the deficiency syndromes and so forth. Awesome. Awesome. That's going to be great to have that as a resource. So for this episode of Full Spectrum Living with CBD, I am your co-host Meredith here with your hosts, Jessica and Adrian, and we will see you all the next time. Bye. <laughs>